This month in EnviroTube, we're visiting Megan Halcroft. Megan has a PhD in studying Ostroplebia, a stingless native bee that doesn't occur in Sydney but is a bit more north. Today we're picking up habitats made by Megan to try and encourage people's knowledge of solitary bees and get them to connect with solitary bees. There's been very little research done on our Australian native bees. Now I had an idea of what if I set this up and had half of them occupied, what if I moved half of them and gave them to someone who say didn't have any blue banded bees? Okay, so that's okay if you can be sure, if, if you were going to do that, you could give them to people who are within a couple of suburbs of each other and be fairly sure that you're not going to um, compromise the ecological balance of, of, of an area because species are specific to an area and so if you've got say five species in one area but not this other species and you then introduce species six, species six actually might be able to dominate over these indigenous species and then it can actually become a pest. Right. And it might not have been in that area for a specific reason, it may have sort of been climate restricted or something like that, but because you've then introduced it, it will become... Because I was imagining maybe you could sell tomato seedlings and a blue banded bee habitat. You, you could. The with problem bees. with the blue banded bee habitat is they live in aggregations. You can't just, you can't just sort of give somebody one of these. But why can't you give someone because one of Because they're not going to be happy, they will probably move away because they like to live in what big areas. What if you areas. gave five or six of them? Yep, that'd be fine, yep. But or see, you could give one that's got, got habitat a lot of holes. See, and then you could give them the empty blocks as well. Well see this one here, just say if we had the six holes filled, yep. would that be an aggregation? I don't think so. I haven't done much research on these, it's just been what I've seen. Yes. But Anne Dolan said that they prefer to have quite a large, like normally they would live in on a riverbank yes. along the riverbank, oh, so right, okay. it's large areas. They prefer to live in large areas because it's safety in numbers. Yes. Um, so the bigger the aggregation, the, the less likely you are to get picked off by a predator because you've got all these other people, <laughs> yes. all these other bees to get picked off first. Yes. And same with the um, blue band, uh, sorry, the teddy bear bees. They live in aggregations, but it, within the ground, not in sort of uh, walls of... Um, well, I just think this is a, like a real garden, sort of like almost sculpture. And I'd like to see a lot of gardens with them. Join the club. Wild Things is starting this program where we're handing out solitary bee habitats. Now, that's because there's so many solitary bees in Sydney, if we supply the habitats, it's like building the baseball field. They will come. Thanks for watching EnviroTube. Looking forward to seeing you next time.